Hello. Uh, I want to give you a, a quick video here. Um, I did a video about uh, my home theater and the audio setup, but I uh, got some comments and questions about uh, the video aspect of it. Uh, forget the audio, just do something about the video, you know. So I just want to give you a, a couple of hints and advice on um, what to do about the screen. Uh, my particular screen is um, 147 inches mm -hmm. across, which is roughly about 10 and a half feet wide. Um, obviously, in order to buy a screen of that size, a fabric one, um, would cost you, for a good one, probably, huh, I don't know, five, six thousand dollars, you know, and it, it goes up from there. I'm just talking like a um, average level. Um, so the other, the least expensive option would be to, to paint the screen. And as you know, there's a few companies out there that make screen paint. Mm -hmm. uh, the most popular one is uh, called Goo Systems, G-O-O -O Systems. And they make um, screen paint. Uh, when they, I, don't, I don't know if they changed any, uh, uh, the way they do the, they make the paint, but they used to have like two separate cans. Uh, the first one was a base coat. Uh, which basically what it was, just like a really, really fine, bright white primer, which you would apply on the, screen, on the wall. Um, and then the second coat was the top coat, they called it. Then the top coat had uh, what it looked like. It looked like uh, a clear coat with a fine, like, metal dust particles in it for the reflection. Uh, and then you would apply... I think you would apply about three coats of primer and two coats, two coats of uh, top coat. Um, there's also another company, uh, I believe it's Paint Supply, Screen Paint Supply. If you search on Google, you'll find it. Um, they also had, had the same setup where they had a uh, base coat and the top coat. Uh, when I initially painted the screen, I used the, the two-step method, which is a base coat and the top coat. But when I had my uh, basement redone, uh, uh, Doofus that was doing the work, uh, I guess he was swift, turning around with a 2 by 4 and put a hole in my wall. I tried to cover it and uh, you know patch it up, but it just it, I always saw it. And the projector was shining. I uh, was... Uh, displaying pictures on the, on, the, on the wall, and I just, it was right there in the middle. So what I had to do was basically do it from from the beginning. I just uh, patched the hole up, um, and I ordered paint. Now this time, when I ordered the paint, they didn't have this, uh, the, the paint supply a place didn't have a two-step process anymore. They had one-step process, one-step uh, process paint. Uh, which basically has like everything in it already, primer and uh, and a top coat. Um, I think on this wall alone, I probably have like, because I want to have it done real, real nice. So I have probably six base coats on it. Uh, then I had a top coat, and then I had to redo it. So I have another. Uh, I did uh, had a leftover base coat, which I applied also after I fixed the hull, and then I bought the paint from them again, which was a one-step process, applied it, uh, and it turned out quite nice. Now, I did do have to tell you about uh, the first time when I did the screen, I made some mistakes which were showing uh, when the movie was playing, especially in bright scenes. Basically, when you paint a screen of this size, uh, it's it's kind of hard. Uh, you have to, what I had set up was like five chairs at the bottom here, and you have to paint from one end sideways. You can't paint like this. You gotta paint sideways, and you have to go from one end to the other. And then you gotta come back again and paint from one end to another. You can't go back and forth and back and forth. It's important for those little uh, metal partic particles in, in the paint to be kind of, 
positioned in the one, in one direction. So the reflection is, is, it gets proper reflection. That's what I was told of by the guy when I called him on the phone. So what, when I made a mistake, uh, where I made a mistake was, is because the screen is so big, I didn't have enough paint on the roller to go from one end to the other. So I had good enough, uh, enough paint for maybe to go halfway. So then I would dip it again, and I would continue on. And what happened was, I had too much paint in the middle. It was a lot thicker than it was on the sides. So, when I thought it was dry, when, when I thought the paint was dry, I waited two days. It was dry here, and it was dry here, but it was still wet in the middle. So when I applied the second coat of top coat, what happened was the paint that wasn't dry yet, uh, like rose from the wall. It just it, 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 the, the, the surface, the texture was different. And when that happened, you know, I didn't know what else to do. I, I waited another four, four days and I applied another layer of top coat and I, I couldn't get rid of it. So when I uh, turned the projector on, you could definitely see a uh, different pattern of light bouncing off in the middle and on the sides. So when I redo, uh, when I redid the uh, the screen again, uh, what I did was I bought rollers that uh, were not as smooth, but they could hold more paint. And that was enough for me to go from one end to the other. So that's just give you a few points on how you paint. Uh, have enough paint and on the roller to go from one to, end to another and buy the best roller you can buy. Don't buy the cheap roller that, you know, those little fuzzy things stay on the wall. Don't buy that. And I would p prepare your surface before you paint. Uh, take some sandpaper, you know, fine grain sandpaper, put it on, the, you know, those, they got those sticks, long sticks, uh, smooth the surface, and then you apply the paint. And that is the, the least expensive way uh, you know, of, of making your own home theater screen. And, and believe me, it's, it works really, really well. And I have gone to Best Buy and, and other, you know, home theater stores, and I looked at their, uh, you know, five, six thousand dollar screens that they make, I mean, that they sell. Um, and uh, honestly, I I think this beats, beats the heck out of all the screens that I've seen. So, uh, and it's the least expensive way. I believe paint the whole screen, uh, it was roughly around four or five hundred dollars, uh, and that's the, the easiest way to do it. Uh, uh, I also want to talk about uh, projectors and see if I have enough time. No, I don't have enough time, but uh, uh, projectors, just to, uh, to give you a little summary, uh, DLP and LCD projectors. Uh, I would go with the uh, LCD projectors. I believe they're less noisy. And, uh, there used to be the time when, when, when DLP projectors were better, but now LCD projectors uh, caught up and they're quite good. I'm using currently the, uh, the Epson 9500UB. Nine, nine, uh, quite, quite good projector. I would definitely recommend. Um, I will, I will do more of an in-depth video on projectors uh, in the near future, and I post, I'm gonna post it on my, uh, on YouTube, on my channel. Thank you.